Hello, and welcome to the Cleveland International Film Festival's Film Slam Streams Post-Film Conversation for the Effects. My name is Eric Seiler, Professor of Film, Media Arts, and Communication, as well as moderator for this conversation. We are very pleased to be joined by the director of the effects, Michael Berry. Michael is um, joining us from Cleveland. Hello, Michael, and welcome. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? How you guys doing? Good, good. The effects. The effects, are, uh, I'm sure most of you um, students who have seen it know that this film was actually written by a 16-year-old student named Rosemary, and, um, and uh, Michael had the pleasure of directing it. And Michael, how did you actually connect with um, Rosemary to actually um, direct this film? Uh, the film's producer, uh, Stephanie Wahome, I think that's her last name. Uh, she reached out to me, they were looking for a new director and they usually bring people in from out of town, but uh, my name came up and being is that though I'm from Cleveland and so is Rosemary. So it just kind of, it was a good union, you know what I'm saying? A Cleveland director, a Cleveland writer, a Cleveland producer, you know, to make a, a strong movie. So that's how I came on board. Oh, wonderful. So when you received the script, um, what, what was your first impressions of the script? Uh, my first impressions were, I was wild because I hear about um, ICE on the news, but I hear it from a news capacity. This was a personal story. You know, all I ever see is the arrest, the kick doors, policy, procedure type of thing. But I, I've never been so close to an actual story of what actually happens to a family. And so that brought me in and I was like, wow, not many people know this type of story. They just know what they see on the news. I, 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 interesting. Yes, they, they do. And just to have someone who's um, a 16 year old um, actually write this story um, and um, to um, actually express their feelings. Um, how true did you stay to the script in terms of director as a director, directors add their own, you know, um, artistic mm -hmm. style to it? Can you talk about how you stuck mm -hmm. to the script or did not? Well, I tried to stay as close as I could to her voice, but then I also had to follow what I know to be acceptable cinematic language that may not be exactly how she saw it. A lot of times we 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 have things in our heads that we want to express, but they don't come across the same on television. So a director's job is to make sure a larger and wider audience can grasp the concept that we're trying to portray from this script. So it was a little tug of war between Rosemary, myself and the producer. But that's just the game. I mean, we we all had the same vision at the end of the day. So we just had to sit down, have a few powwows during the day and said, well, this worked at first, but now it does. It could be something as, as trivial as the room size. Like this room doesn't look like a real living room. Let's shoot it in the backyard, which we actually did. Like if we shoot this in the living room, it's not going to look family enough. Let's shoot it in the backyard where it's more room so we can show them moving about each other. So we just went back and forth on different things because we, we all had the same mission to come up with a great a great end product. Well, that that you did. And um, in terms of um, filming this, um, how long did it actually take to um, shoot this film? Now we shot uh, three days. We did 27 pages in three days. You know, and if I don't know if any of you guys are into film, that's a lot. 27, nine pages a day is a lot. That's a lot. Yeah, that, that is a lot to pack that in, especially at multiple locations, mm -hmm. interior and exterior locations as well, too. Um, let's look at the um, casting a little bit of the okay. film. I know you worked with the casting director, Lillian Powell. Um, um, can you talk about the input that you had in selecting the um, uh, cast, especially um, the dad, Hector, who I thought was amazing? The biggest problem we actually had with casting is getting Latinos who could feel they had to be able to speak it a little bit. You know what I mean? So it was, I was surprised that we had a lot of people, they couldn't speak, uh, you know, Puerto Rican or, you know, that Latin. So we had to, and we like your look, but we, you got to be able to speak a little bit or, or at least come across authentic. And so we wanted people who felt authentic and, um, and just felt real, like real people. And so, um, and we went back and forth for a couple of weeks actually on casting before we settled on the, on the cast that we came up with. Oh, okay. Well, yes, it does take a while to um, cast the film. In terms of what well, you brought up an interesting point, well, one thing directors do is they do their research and development. So knowing that you are directing a, a piece uh, of the Hispanic 
uh, Hispanic in nature. Did you do anything to try to understand the Hispanic culture or maybe you could be part of Hispanic or did you do anything in particular? Well, I was familiar with, with it um, in a commercial sense. You know, we so, you know, it's around us. So I was familiar with it, but it was a lot of things about that go on inside the home, the way the family interacts with each other that I didn't know. So we had to consult with the grandmother and the mother and, you know, things like we would never do that or we would never say that or this would always happen this way. And I, so I said, OK, we have to try to encompass what always happens or should happen. So if especially if the Hispanic culture is watching because this is their voice. So I don't I wouldn't want them to feel, you know, like we didn't do our our best to portray one of their own stories. And so, yeah, we had to do a little homework. And with Rosemary, her mother, her father, they were right there. So they always were able to tell me that wouldn't happen that way. And it was just, okay, let's adjust. How would it happen? And we just, you know, just made the quick adjustments. Well, that's that's good. That's good. It's also great for that you, you're flexible and, you know, wanting the voice, as you said earlier, uh, to uh, come true in the film, out in the film. Um, in, in terms of, um, uh, let's, one thing that um, I just want to let everyone know that um, we're almost halfway through our conversation with um, director Mike Berry, director of the effects. And uh, if you have questions, please put them in the Q&A portal and I'll get to them as time allows. Um, I, Mike, we talked earlier before this interview and uh, one thing that you shared with me is that um, there was a lot left on the cutting room floor. Can you mm -hmm. talk a little bit about how much we did not see and what we did not see in the film? Okay, with a movie, I think the final running time was about 18 minutes, somewhere around there, but the original cut was probably closer to 29 minutes. But the producers felt it was too long for a film festival. And so they start chipping away, two minutes, nope, make it shorter, three minutes, nope, get it down to 18. So when you have a story and you tell the whole story, you have to figure out how to cut it down and still tell the whole story. But you can't be telling the whole story because it's 11 minutes missing. So you got you you got to make sure it's not any potholes or any at the end people are feeling like something's missing. And sometimes good filmmakers or film enthusiasts will spot those holes that you left is because you left them. But you you know we just had to go back and forth between I the producer and the, and the editor and just try to fill in all the questions and make one cohesive story 11 minutes shorter. So that's a tough thing to do, and but we got it done. Right, and it's very um, uh, coherent. We understand, yeah. understood exactly what went on. Very um, linear story in which we understood. So it's hard to tell that you left out that much. But what are some of the things specifically that you left out that we would, um, that we did not see? Well, in my process, the first thing I start cutting is what I call repeaters. So let's just say Rosemary had a moment with her friend Antonio. I can cut any other moment she had with him because we see the dynamic between them. Mary had, Rosemary had an interaction with her mother. I don't have to show that twice. I showed a loving moment with her mother. So that's a minute. That's a minute and a half. So I went through all through the movie and we pulled out anything that was a repeater um, because a lot of times movies will repeat a fine moment between a mother and her child maybe two or three times. So let's cut all of those out except for the best one so that's what we did. And then in the climactic scene, it was a lot longer. Like after after they had the where she played the piano, it it they went back to the center and they taught the kids how to play instruments. But we were able to show that in slow mo. But it was actually dialogue there where they were telling them what to do. And Rosemary gave her. speech and so we you know here and there we went through it over and over until we hit the mark of the time they said they wanted oh, oh good good so some interesting things that were cut out and probably you cut out um the part uh there was a, a part where um rosa was at her against kinciera her um sweet 16 mm -hmm. her father was dancing with her i think you probably have more footage in there in the original Mo film more footage, just the 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 day, the time leading up to the to the to the King Sierra, and some things that happened right there at the King Sierra. So we just cut it down to them to almost a flashback, 
And so I said, well, let's just have her rub the dress and then dissolve into the King Sierra. So the viewer knows this is what she's dreaming about, the King Sierra. But that whole scene was a lot longer than that um, from, the, from her holding the King Sierra dress in her hand and actually showing the King Sierra. We just kind of like morphed it all together. Well, good, good. We do have one question that's come in. The question is, um, why were the um, police so violent with Hector when he wasn't resisting at all? So I guess that's a... Uh, uh, that according according to like the father and the mother, it's, it's not uncommon. And, you know, I think to the vast majority, when they look at uh, who they deem to be illegal aliens, they don't see them as American citizens. So sometimes they are a bit rough. I mean, the father was in real life just snatched off his job and threw in prison and just like in the movie. And, and so they, you know, doors are often kicked in, windows smashed out. And these are just stories that I got from talking to uh, people who have gone through this. And it wasn't like the police knocked on the door and said, hey, can you come out here so I can talk to you? No, they're coming in and they're coming in with force. And so, I mean, these is the story. This is exactly how it happened to him, only at his job. So we just kind of retold that story. Well, good. Yeah, that's why I, I figured too. And I thought they were, the way you had it, I thought they were kind of nice to him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we didn't have any stunt, man. It, it, was, it, was, it would have been different, but we didn't, we didn't have a re, we couldn't do breakable glass where we could reset and do it again. <laughs> right. But, you know, but still, it fit in with the whole tone of the film. Mm -hmm. Another question we have coming in is, um, uh, is the, uh, the, is the person that played Rosa, is she a singer or an actress? So I guess they're referring to the part that she was singing throughout the film. Did you? Okay, two things. That wasn't her singing. <laughs> <laughs> She's an actress and her voice was overdubbed when she sang at the, at the uh, she held a note in the beginning, but when she actually had to sing later, that was, I don't know if you saw the girl who sung in the talent show, the, the other, that was her voice actually singing the song as Rosa played at the piano. So, okay. uh, yeah, so she, she, she doesn't sing. That wasn't her singing. Well, you did a, did a good job um, because you would have thought it was actually Rosa's voice. You know, uh, when people sing, they sing differently from when they talk. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't too far off mm -hmm. uh, with that. Um, yeah, so some good questions, folks. So, so keep asking questions. Um, one thing I want to ask um, is about the um, the cast. You had two little girls in there, really young. Is that mm -hmm. something that was part of the original script, or did you add them in there to um, make it a little more lighthearted? Well, the producer wrote the wrote them in. Those are the producer's <laughs> children. That was uh, uh, Stephanie's children. So she wrote them in, and they had more words, but it was tough getting it out of them. So we that's edited down because they have way more words from the time when they signed her up for the contest but it was just hard because they weren't real actors so we had to coach them like line by line i say this i say that i say this so we cut a lot of it out but uh they were there pretty good to be uh just young kids they they held in they held on well good yes they, they actually did you know they uh, you know when you saw them you were wondering what's going to happen next so mm -hmm. <laughs> Good. Now that this film, um, because of um, uh, the pandemic, this film didn't have an official release. Is, is that correct? And um, right. And we're so grateful that you were able to let us have it as part of this platform. So in this limited release and showing the film to whoever you showed it to, what has been a general reaction to uh, this film? Overwhelming. People like it. Um, you know, it gives a voice to the youth and shows the youth that you do, in fact, have a voice. And um, I didn't I don't think Rosemary saw herself as a writer, but she was able to tell a real story um, and we were able to bring it to life. So I'm sure it was touching for her and her family. So the, the, the consensus is that it's a good movie, man. We, we really proud of it and we proud for everybody who was involved, of it, especially Rose, because it's her personal story. Right. And, and speaking of Rosemary, did she make a cameo at all in the film? Her whole family, when they were, when the young lady was playing the piano, when the father came home, it's a shot where you see like a husband, a wife, and a couple. That's the real family. The, the oh, real family was there. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad you did that. Is that something you 
um, added in or Rosemary wanted to? Yeah, they had to get in. I told them you'll have to get in. I don't think they wanted to. They, they had to. You have to. I, absolutely. You really had to do that. All right. Let's, uh, in terms of the film, let's talk a, a little bit more about the um, ending. Um, you know, Rosa was obviously the, uh, uh, the one that tied the film together with her, you know, missing her father, giving up her college money and so forth. And at the end, how did you choose to um, um, make the end happen? The end could have been done a lot of different ways. She could have like mm -hmm. uh, could have ran up to her father. She could have um, met him in a different way. How did you decide to do it that way? Um, I actually wanted the ending to be when he was sitting at the piano and they hug and it fade to black. But in the script, it was another day where they ended up at the center and they were teaching kids how to use instru instruments for their voice. And Rosa got up and gave a speech about what community means to her. And then we just saw the different kids playing with the instruments. And so we had to kind of merge at the end. I don't know if you see in slow motion, they playing the instruments, but it's actually dialogue there. But I kind of wanted to end it. I wanted to end it right at the piano because to me, that was it. But, uh, you know, for time purposes, we had to merge the two and then fade it out or slow-mo and fade out the, the ending in the, in, the, uh, in the cultural center. Okay, well, good. That, that's it still it still worked out well and in, in tying the film together uh, nicely. Um, for, so after working on this film and um, you know, shooting and editing it, well, what do you want people to get from this film? Um, that I, I want people to know that there are people going through things. Um, this led Rosa to feel some you know some feelings. It might you might be dealing with depression or anxiety all because of something that's happening to you so when you see your fellow students or other people on the street you never know what they're going through just everything might be going well for you but that doesn't mean everything is going well for everybody and like rosa said one day her dad was here the next day he was gone so life can change what you're dealing with today tomorrow is a whole different day and things could take a drastic turn and they took a drastic turn for her and her family but they worked out but for so many families things don't work out, especially when you're talking about um, ICE and that whole situation. So they had to raise a lot of money. And these are just working class people had to come up with like 30, 40, $50,000 to keep her husband here. But the community stepped in, her mother back in Guatemala sold everything she had so her son wouldn't have to come back to Guatemala. Now, I mean, that's powerful right there. You know, I, I don't want you to come back here. I want you to stay in the US. So. It, it just taught me a lot not to take for granted things that we wake up every day and take for granted that things are going to always be okay and things are not going to always be okay. But, you know, through family, love and prayer, you know, things can be set right. Exactly. Well, very, very powerful statement. We have um, one last question that's come in is um, why does um, Hector have an ankle bracelet on at the end? I mean, is not, I mean, I guess they do want him to go back to his country, but. Uh, yeah, and that's part of where we had to cut the story. Actually, he got out. They raised the money to get him out, but he's he was only out on bond waiting to go back to court. And if after he has the ankle br bracelet on, you'll see the Vietnamese woman talking to Rosa's mother. And she says, we, we have him for right now. It's not over, but we have him back right now. We had to cut the dialogue where she explained he's home uh, on home confinement uh, until he goes back to uh to this time to go back to court. So he's not out of the woods yet, but he's not in jail at this moment. But we just we had to cut it down for time. Okay, I see, I see. Well, good. A lot of interesting elements in there to spark a lot of conversation. Well, Mike, this has really been a invigorating, interesting conversation. Can you let um, our audience know what can we expect from you next? Are you working on anything now? Yeah, um, I got a movie called A State of Mind. It's about mental health. So you'll be seeing that soon. But you can go see some other works I did on Amazon Prime. You can see uh, Hey Mr. Postman. You can see Banger. You can see Rent Do. Um, Rent Do is also on Hulu and Stars. Um, so just look me up on, on um Amazon Prime, Mike Berry. I got a few movies I directed on there. So my next movie, A State of Mind, is probably going to be on the biggest platform I've ever been on. I just got to close this deal, so I can't speak on it yet. But uh, it'll definitely put me in the national spotlight. All right. Well, great, great. Well, we wish you all the best. 
with all your in, endeavor, endeavors and congratulations on the effects. We look forward to um, oh, even a wider distribution once the pandemic ends. I appreciate and, it. Yes, and I'd like to thank you, our student audience, for joining us today. If you're interested in learning more about the upcoming 45th Cleveland International Film Festival, please visit clevelandfilm.org. Thank you for joining us. I'm Eric Seiler. <laughs>